most high God for opening our eyes to know this truth so that we do not miss the reward of Christianity. Thank you for delivering us from false preachers and teachers by giving us the true teacher and preacher, teachers and preachers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 10, from verse 1. Leviticus, chapter 10, from verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them, his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. Everything done in the temple was by divine commandment. The building of the temple, the utensils of the temple, the sacrifice of the temple, the arrangement of all the utensils of the temple, everything was dictated by the living God. These were sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu. Uh, and uh, I think the meal, and they were four altogether, I could say. So, these two, on their own, added to what the Lord said they should do. Whatever inspiration came in them, you should know it came from the devil. So, they put, the Bible says here, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire thereon. Which fire? They were supposed to take that fire from inside the altar, but not the altar fire. They put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered it became strange fire. Not the way God wanted the fire to be gotten. They offered strange fire which he commanded them not. So, these teachings that are being given in the church which God has not commanded because they are not in scripture. They are called strange fire. Strange doctrines. God didn't command them. Just as in the Old Testament we can see here in Nadab and Abihu. God didn't command those people. Those doctrines you won't find them in scripture. You won't find their examples. You won't find two portions of scripture justifying them. No. They, they imagined them. They used them on their own. It's the devil that told them to do it. To spoil the truth, the pure truth in the altar. The pure truth in the church. That devil commanded them. Now in verse 2. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. The end. All those preachers shall go to hell. All of them. They shall be going to hell. These ones that are pouring water on you, giving you holy water. These ones that are saying, take anointing oil and drink. Different from the use of anointing oil that is limited to the sick and that very sick which 
the Bible gives permission to call elders to the house. It's not that they should come before your altar. It's not that they should bring the sick to your altar. Go and see them in the house because they are, they, they, are, they, they are sick in the way some were sick in Jesus' time and Jesus was invited to the house. In that circumstance, oil can be used in the house. Well, I've written about anointing oil already. It is not the oil that will heal, but what heals? In the name of? That is what heals up to today. What is the oil for? It has a, a suiting um, property. It has some healing property too. It's, it's, a, it's like a lubricant that can lubricate the place, suit the place, and relieve some pains. Because it was used as medicine in Palestine. But the thing that would bring the miracle healing is in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith in the name of the Lord. Apart from this recommended, any other use of anointing oil, whichever way, in business premises, in the church, in the church altar, sprinkling upon the doors and the chairs, and all will end up in hell. Because God didn't command that. All those ministers that go for anointing oil, they say, we're anointing you, anointing service. They have not got an example of that. None in the Old Testament. None in Jesus' time. None in the apostolic time. Where did they get it from? It's from Satan. Who? Oh, hell. They and their participants, all of them are going to hell. So it's a serious, a strange fire that they're offering in the church things that God has not commanded. You're drinking anointing oil. You're carrying anointing oil about for your doom. All this Christianity you're doing with anointing oil has no eternal life in it because it was not commanded by God that you should do so. Is commanded by Nadab and Abihu. It is what preachers of the kind of Nadab and Abihu have brought up in our day, have brought up as strange things to the church. So you take note of that and be very, very careful so that you don't damn your soul. And many of you were in this type of churches, and the Lord showed you mercy and brought you where you can hear. The word of God. Again, Paul rebuked Peter for exalting circumcision above faith in Christ in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 11. Galatians, chapter 2, verse 11 to verse 18. The Bible tells us here, saying, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. What? Peter came to Antioch where Paul was. And Paul was in Antioch. The, remember, it was in Antioch. The believers were called, first called Christians because of the pure teaching that was going on then. Peter being the chief of the apostles from Jerusalem came down to Antioch, he did something. For before, this, the, before, before that, Satan came from James. He did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with the dissimulation. Peter came down to Antioch and saw the one church, Jews and Gentiles all together, eating and drinking, because in Christ there is reconciliation. In Christ, Jews and Gentiles become one. The enmity has been taken away because life is no more by the commandment. Life is now by faith. The just doesn't live by commandment of the law, but the just lives by 
faith. And faith in who? In Jesus. The Gentiles have believed in Jesus. The Jews also who believed in Jesus have become also Christians. So both Gentiles and Jews become one enmity removed. The law of commandment has been disannulled, cancelled. They are living by faith in Christ and the teachings of righteousness. When Peter came, he, he joined this. He lived as one. But some people came from James. And James in Jerusalem had been an advocate of Christianity and the law joined together. He himself had not arrived at it perfectly. Remember, James was the brother of Jesus who didn't believe all through the time of Jesus on earth until after the resurrection. And so, being brother of the Lord and come, coming to believe, people honored him, but he has some bile along with him, he still believed that the law should be practiced. It took him time to be over it. It took somebody like Paul to cancel that type of thing in their lives, that if the law was an answer to faith, to righteousness, Christ would have not come. Christ came because the law could not save anybody. Why are you not forcing people to follow the law? So, Peter came to this liberty and was eating and drinking with the brethren. But Satan came from James. Ah, let not James hear me that I have come again and unite with the Gen united with the Gentiles. He stopped eating with the Gentiles to show that they have to be circumcised to obey the law of Moses. And because Peter did it, example from a leading person becomes general practice for everybody. Since Peter stopped eating with the Gentiles, Barnabas that had been walking with Paul among the Gentiles all this while, playing freedom in the faith, became afraid that if the chief of apostles has done this, then uh, maybe something is wrong there. I too will not do it. And other leaders who have been enjoying liberty, oneness in the church, before Peter came, I mean, before these people came from James, dissembled also, followed the same way. And they were, Paul was noticing a separation from the Jews and the Gentiles. Maybe to shake hands, as a Gentile man is bringing hands to shake his brother, he will take it back. You are not yet circumcised. Ooh, where is this thing from? So he opened his mouth and spoke openly to Peter, yes, openly, Paul spoke to Peter and said, uh, in verse 14, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, this error is enough to send people to hell. Going to heaven is not that casual. You must be dedicated. There must be no error. Be ye perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Here, they had created another route to show that believers must be circumcised. Then, the death of Christ is not complete. The death of Christ is not dependable. You must do something in additional to the death, in addition, to the death of Christ before you will be served. Then the death of Christ is insufficient. This is a destruction of the gospel. That is what they did to the Galatians. That's why Paul said, who bewitched you? Oh, Galatians, which I am traveling in pain again until Christ is formed in you. Because you have destroyed the faith. I'm saying this to say, little deviation from the faith is dead. It carries death with it. You must be perfect. Don't be 99. Your church must not be 99% correct. It must be 100% correct. Otherwise, they're teaching dead to the people. If you don't get the total thing, if you don't observe the total thing, you are not fit to go to heaven. A little level, what does it do? Leaven it the whole lump. Again, a little living, what does it do? So ask you, what does it do? A little leaven, what does it do? 
leaving the whole long. A little error destroys your faith. The whole faith is destroyed. The whole faith is destroyed. So, Satan brings in this little, little thing. You look at it as little. Great man of God. But he has some little errors in their life. Little errors. Great man of God. And you think you are going by his greatness. You are getting into the problem now. You are now going by his greatness, not by the word of God. Churches like Deepa Life have lost themselves by this thing. They are going by Kumui because he's the great man. They don't follow scripture. Where does scripture condemn revelation? They are not asking that. Our pastor said, you are harming yourself. And as a result, many of them are fighting us. They are fighting revelation. We are fighting your God. That's what the Lord told Saul. You are kicking against the priests. It's a hard thing. You are, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Because of this ignorance that is in you, you are falling, you are failing from the law of love. Love your brother as yourself. But no, no. Why are they saying revelation? Where is the problem with revelation? Where is the evil? And you detain that scripture? To the point that God will give you revelation and say, ah, oh, they will not take it here. The church is for who? For Jesus or for man? That is what they do not know. So be very careful. Make sure you follow scripture. Just as my brother, he said, man of God in court. I've never seen what you're saying in scripture. I should bring apple. Eat five apple. Apple if I need five children. Eat banana. <laughs> From where? That's the practice of the flesh. They that walk in the flesh shall not please God. That's the word of God. So, if I don't correct this in Peter, he will ring the faith of many. Because the chiefest of the apostles. See now, people are here already. Including Barnabas have gone. Including Barnabas. When God walks out to raise a man, he has wisdom. See how he pursued Paul. See how he was patient with Paul's error until he got him. He got him. All the people Paul persecuted and even killed, he recovered in restitution by his ministry. He got more people double, double to the end time, to the end generation, end time generation for Jesus by the spirit of truth and adherence to truth. So he said, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them Oh, where is the name of a man so sacred that cannot be called? Where do we think? And Peter was the sacred. If there was anybody sacred, it was Peter. Because he was the chiefest of the apostles. Jesus gave a remark. Unto you I give the keys of the kingdom. It was Peter that addressed the Jews after Pentecost. So he was a sacred person. But why must I not talk about him? Why must I not point out his error? Is Peter Jesus? Did Peter die for the church? Never. He said, I said to Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Today, Peter, you are a married person. Whether your wife is menstruating or not, it has no meaning to you. But according to the Jewish rule, if a woman is menstruating, she must not touch any utensil in the house. She must not cook. You must not touch her. Otherwise, you'll be unclean. But Peter, you're not doing so because of the liberty in the gospel of Christ. Peter, you're not washing your hands and your legs and your everything before you eat because you live like Gentiles who don't need to wash those things. Peter, are you sacrificing animals? To please God as a peace offering, as bond offering. Jew, Gentiles don't do that. Now, why are you coming to compel the Gentiles to do what even you are not doing? You are asking them that they should now go on to be obey the laws of Jews, which you yourself are not doing. You are asking them to be circumcised. You are asking them to observe the laws. 
That's why he said, We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the, by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We who are Jews that have believed in Christ have known clearly that the law justifies nobody. It is on, in Christ, faith in Christ that justifies. And we know now that by the deed of the law shall no flesh be justified. You want to push these people to do the law. Is it not to condemn their faith? Is it not to condemn their faith? He made it public. He spoke this public. The name of Peter was made public until it entered eternal book, the Bible. And by that, this arrow died in the church. To have a pure church. These things that you're seeing, if they're not wiped out from the church, they have soiled everybody. They have defiled everybody. They are not fully following Jesus. They are doing this. Faith in Jesus plus that will get to heaven. Not only faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus plus that's what they're preaching. A strange doctrine. Yes. Strange doctrine. Paul told Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have met shipwreck. Can you see it now? Faith in Christ with righteousness is what takes to heaven. But now, people have put away concerning faith. They go to substances now. Go and drink orange. Your Christian life will boost. Go and take sand from Jerusalem. Mix it with mangoes and leaves. You won't be dreaming dreams again. Go and use anointing oil. Rub it in your mouth. Then your mouth will speak wisdom. Go naked in the night and pray. Your prayers will speedily be answered. Is this dealing with faith anymore? They have made a shipwreck of their faith. They have destroyed their faith. These teachers are teachers of shipwreck. They have destroyed people's faith in God. Anointing oil. Some of them are selling their shoes. Come and touch my shoes. If you touch my shoes. Oh, okay, the seat that pastor sit on. Go and sit there. Idolatry. Not faith in Jesus. A sinner is going to sit on the seat of pastor to receive power. To receive healing. No more confession of sins. No more repentance. He's sitting on the seat of pastor. He's carrying anointing oil. No more repentance. Go and do your restitution. You have wronged your father. You have wronged your husband. You have wronged your wife. No. Why are you doing that when you can have whatever you say? When God said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no blessing in your life. If you that call upon my name shall go and repent and turn away from your sin and now pray unto me I will forgive you but if anointing oil can do it do you need to go and repent and God shut up that heaven should anointing oil open the heaven God shut against you does he have power more than God is it not deception adding stubbornness to stubbornness just to destroy the people. So, Paul said, they have made shipwreck. The ship have capsided. Your faith has capsided. This, you're using mantles, using things, sun, oil, salt, banana, 
has capsided your faith in Christ. You're no more a Christian. You're waiting for hell. The spirit of Christ is no more in you. You have compromised. Samson did not know that the Holy Ghost has left him. That is exactly. You have not, you're not aware that the spirit of God has left you because of that thing you're carrying, charm that you're carrying. It's charm. That thing in your hand, holy water, is charm. Can you keep charm and keep Jesus at the same time? That thing represents Satan. It's a, simple, it's a physical representation of Satan in your house, in your pocket, in your cloth. Spray perfume. Spray this. That is what it does and destroys your faith. You're not a Christian again. You're just following. You're serving. You're just increasing the number in the church, waiting for rapture, so that the believers should not be discouraged that there are too few. That is why you're here. Because the, you are gone. You have left the path of Christ. So he said, holding faith and a good conscience, good life, that your conscience is not condemning you for immorality, and a good conscience, that your conscience is not condemning you for stealing, a good conscience, your conscience is not condemning you for lying, a good conscience. Yes, that's what the word of God is saying. A good conscience. Have it. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Those ministers you are calling man of God, I say put court there, because they are not real people, have been delivered to Satan. They are working with Satan. They are working with Satan to make shipwreck of your soul. They are working with him and manufacturing new things. You have not had them enough. You have not had them enough. Very soon they will tell you of another tree, a kind of tree discovered. If you always eat the leaves of it, it represents the tree of life in heaven. You must go to heaven. They will soon tell you something like that. Because they use, they will, how would they contaminate your faith? Which is on pure word of God. They bring to you philosophies and traditions of men. That's what the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians. We read chapter 2 from verse 6 to verse 8. The Bible says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Can you see? You will be spoiled. You were taught the word. Follow the word. Stay by the word. Learn the word. Read the word. Preach the word. Share the word. Believe the word. Be careful lest mean philosophers come up to be telling you additional things you can do to be healed. Additional things you, you can do to be delivered. Additional things you can do to prosper. Additional things and are bringing rudiments of this world. Philosophies of this world, traditions of men, and spoil you. Some of you are spoiled already. Good food is spoiled. Good fruit has become spoiled. It's smelling. It's smelling because the way it's not well preserved. It's not well preserved. And so it's spoiling now. So, in Second Peter, chapter 2, Second Peter, Chapter 2. The Bible tells us from verse 1 to verse 3. Yes, saying, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily 
shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Upon themselves. These ones that are teaching you this thing, themselves will be destroyed. Themselves. These pastors and teachers, these evangelists, they shall be destroyed. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Preachers of truth shall be abused because of these people. People will agree with them. Even as I'm talking now, some of you, the devil has so hung on your heart. That is, ah, it's because uh, God is, uh, because uh, whatever Satan is telling you. Listen to this thing and be saved. So that's what I'm t they have brought in. Now, what are these strange things? I want us to stop in the church. I've talked about dancing. When we are worshiping, mild shaking of the body. Of course, as you clap your hand, your body can shake. Mild shaking of your body is not what I'm saying. But this dancing you have brought, and many of you are not born again. And you are introducing it to the church. So that people now will start dancing and be satisfying the flesh. Worshipping in the flesh instead of worshipping in the spirit. Worshipping with your heart. Now you are worshipping with your body. Your mind is not even there. The songs are for your pleasure. And as a result, the songs are not even hard. And you people playing the, the, uh, the organ, make it higher than the song so that they are following the rhythm of the organ, not the songs. No inspiration. Inspiration is of the flesh because of the music. We stop that. Stop that. Clapping during prayers. Some people, during, these things have been introduced now. As they are praying, bah, 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 bah. what are you clapping for? We want noise. So that those who cannot pray should still be feeling as if, let them be clapping for us. <laughs> those who cannot pray should be clapping for those who are praying. And those who are praying say, it gives us inspiration. Where did you get it from? Is it what you are manufacturing or what is already laid down? You are offering a strange fire. That's a strange fire to the church. You are getting it from these philosophers. People don't have the spirit. When the gold is, was removed from the temple, King Hezekiah brought in brass. When spirit, real holy ghost is out of the church, they replace it by other things to show us, oh, the place is charged. Charged with what? When the Holy Ghost is not there, you're not righteous. You're not holy. You make the place high. Everybody be clapping and when praying. Stop it. No example in scripture. If the clap hand for God is maybe for some seconds, that's all. If it is up to one minute. For any particular thing and that's all. But this you're clapping and doing night vigil. Bah, 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 bah. It's a strange fire. Holy Ghost is not there. You have been deceived into it. Your attention is now your... Does it secure your attention and consecration? When you are doing those things, you are clapping. Even if you are not praying, you are clapping. It's a lie. It's a deception. So, those strange things be taken away. Playing music along with prayers. Prayer is going on your playing music. You who are playing this music, they hire you for music, not for prayer. Are you also going to heaven? Are you thinking to go to heaven? This prayer, can't you pray yourself? Or you say you are, play, you are praying in a musical way. To who? God told you to do so. Or you are learning it from backsliders, backsliding churches. Everything must be music. Little song we raise up, you're running up to go and play. Okay, who told you that? There's time for everything, and you confuse the preacher because he just brought up one song to revive the people and go to the next thing. You have gone to sit to play organ, he has to give you time because to satisfy you, too, you have come to do something. Stop that when it is time for worship, that you know this is time for music. Come there if it is not, sit down. You came for the world. You came to God. You don't come to give service. You come to also receive. It is only in your time of giving service.
that you give service. Going to give offering in appreciation of a message and activity outside offering time. That's what they do in other places. <laughs> I was in Benin City many years ago preaching in one church. Then as I was preaching, the woman definitely has not had that type of preaching before. She stood up and, you know, with this palming and this dark hair, she was coming. As she was coming to the pulpit, ah, where are the ushers? <laughs> you are allowing this woman to come to me here? What is she coming for? I was also getting ready for her. What? <laughs> I didn't know what she's coming for. Is it to fight me? Ah, and nobody was moved. Then she came to the altar and dropped money. <sighs> You hear what I'm saying now? Now I'm peaceful. Thank God. <laughs> I thought she was a mad woman coming to fight me in the pulpit and nobody was moving. See how she disrupted me in the spirit. Demonic destruction. To some others, pump right into him. And a service of humility that somebody is ministering to the people. You pump right. You don't know those things. It may be these Pentecostals that are looking for money. Money for this, money for that. Money. Are, they, that's not the Bible say you have received your own reward. Why are you doing that for? Nothing is wrong. Oh, I bless you, Father, for this message. Is, I, I, I thank you. Oh, Jesus. Some can clap hands briefly. It's enough to minister. But there is time for offering. Why don't you wait for it? Why don't you wait for time? Because there's time for offering. So we don't expect people to come while service is going on to be given offering. So mothers make strange shout. Like masquerades. Some will blow whistle. Or speak some vulgar language. These are area boys in the church. The church needs to be a solemn environment. I speak to you the weights of truth and soberness. You should be sober. As you are hearing these words of truth, it should make you to be thinking, checking up on yourself. That is what the preaching should do. And not to be making such noise, strange noise. Right on! Check whether he is born again. That person shouting, right on! Whether he is born again. Or is making noise so that people can see him. That is what you should understand. Yeah. Again, use of holy water. Please, no water can be made holy. Everybody repeat it. If water can be made holy, then food can be made holy. Fruits can be made holy. Dog can be made holy. God can be made holy. If it was in those days, we say dedicated unto the Lord for offering, for sacrifice. Dedicated unto the Lord in the altar. But now, is that water dedicated to the Lord? What makes it holy? Oh, man of God prayed on the water. Ah. Who told you that because man of God prayed on it, it became holy? That is a question. No water is made holy. It's still deception. It's still deception. From the beginning, since you came here, and you are testifying of the great grace of God, did you see water? Except when you're testing and they share water for you to drink. Did you see any water made holy here? Eh? Jesus turned water into wine, but he never turned into any water to holiness. He never made any water holy. So that's deception. It's pollution. It's deception and pollution. See the preachers who are doing those things. Are they in Christ? Are they holy themselves? Defiled people making a thing holy? How? 
Can dirty water wash clean a cloth? That is why stop that. But I said something. I said there are uncommon miracles that happens once in a while by God in a person's life, in a person's ministry, but may not repeat in somebody else's life or ministry. Or may not even keep repeating in that person's ministry after a period of time. One, Jesus turned water into wine. He did it only once. He didn't do another one second. No disciple turned water into wine. No preaching, exhortation was made that the church can turn water into wine if they believe God. Nothing like that. The shadow of Peter healed the sick. Shadow of Jesus didn't heal the sick. Being God in man, he didn't heal. It's a prerogative of God to choose what to do in this man's life, in that other man's life. The shadow of Paul didn't heal the sick. They are special miracles. And the shadow of Peter did not continue to heal the sick. Again, Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul to the sick, and demons were cast out and the sick were healed. Handkerchiefs and aprons were not taken from the body of Jesus to heal the sick. Handkerchiefs and aprons were not taken from the body of Peter to heal the sick. Handkerchiefs and aprons were not taken from the body of John, the beloved apostle, to heal the sick. It only happened in Paul's life. It didn't repeat in Timothy's ministry. It didn't happen in Barnabas who was walking along with Paul. Let's have understanding so that demons, intelligent demons should not come to wreck your faith in the church. And now we have churches that are using aprons. And they say, hey, if you put on this apron, bullet will not enter into you. Charm. If you put on this apron, armed robbers will run away from the road. Charm, witchcraft. The sick person, go and spread an apron upon him and he will be healed. Witchcraft. That's what is happening. You are defiled. You have, been, you, have, you, have, you have made shipwreck of your faith. The faith in Christ alone, the faith in his word, the faith in his name, your own faith in another thing. Strange doctrine. Strange fire. Yes. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Use of handkerchiefs and aprons. Strange doctrine. No provision. The Old Testament, the New Testament, where it manifested, never exhorted that any person should use it. Paul didn't pray that he should manifest in his life. It's Jesus that chose to do it. You came to this camp and saw me, maybe sitting under the mango tree there. You said, I know where to find pastor. It's under the mango tree. Who told you? That day, I just chose to, to sit under that mango tree. And now to you, you think, anytime you want to meet pastor, you should go and wait for him in the mango tree. I won't come there. Because that's not the place I stay. You can meet me anywhere. Is that clear? So where are you? Because it happened once. You run there. As when we went to, we were in the village small as young people. If somebody caught a big fish in the stream with hooking, we say, where? Tell us that, that stream you went to. When he tells us, or he told us, we will go and say, where did you put your hook? All of us, 10 people looking for another fish who is manufactured by that point. The fish came from somewhere. And that man got it by luck. The fish may not even be living in that place. Such fishes may not even be living in that place. Why not you senses? Why are you deceived? As if you have no understanding. Can you see it now? Praying in a designated corner 
of your house as an altar. Demonic direction. So that demons can meet you there. And that you will see some sign. Demonic sign. The Bible says, mean pray everywhere. Mean pray everywhere. Why is it must it be in the corner of a house? But it's different from enter into your closet in case of you are trying to make prayers to God and there's a distraction. The place looks public that you cannot concentrate. Enter into your closet. Your closet where people will not see you. Or where you can pray freely and not be distracted. And, and your closet may not be only one place. It can be various places. So, let's avoid those things. Again, praying naked at, night, at midnight. Wonderful. Provide for honest things before all men. Provide for things honest before all men. Live well before the Gentiles that the name of the Lord be not blasphemed. It's you who think that in the night nobody sees you. They see you. People see you and have labeled you as a wizard. They have labeled you as a witch. There is satellite in the sky that can see around the world. If they move to where you are, your nakedness will appear there. And they say, this is an evangelist of signs and wonders. They say, by demons. Because that act is an indecent act. Love does not behave itself unseemly. That is a strange behavior. Very strange. Your children will see you. One day, one day, one will move to go and eat himself and see you naked. Or look through the window. Is it God who says you should be naked? Who provided cloth that they should cover people's nakedness? Okay, which example do you have from scripture? Go by scripture. Not that a prophet says, oh, which prophet? Don't call me the name of any man. Because there is no other name given under heaven that can give human beings salvation. Which is not the name of Jesus. There is no other person under heaven given by men that can give human beings salvation. No, that is not Jesus. All of us are reflecting Jesus. Was Jesus doing this naked business? Everybody said no. no. So, stop those things. Yes. Stop it. Avoid preachers that are specialized in seeing into the realm of the spirit. They see pant color, the color of your pant. They see your yesterday. They see your family. They give you reason for your sickness. They see your future. They give you excitement or worries. These are not a defying. They are not a defying. You see the smell of those things. They are not from God. They are rotten practices. They get them from demons. They wash their face. They have some demons inside them to do those things. Avoid them. Why are you interested in what you must see? They just shall live by faith. That's Christianity. Why are you interested? I want what I want to touch, what I want to see, I want to feel. Why? That's not Christianity. Once in a while you can come to feeling. The law can give you feeling. But you start with faith. Faith. By faith. Faith is what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. There's nothing tangible. But you believe in your heart. And see it real in your heart. That's faith. Then why are you going on feeling? Touch. See. No. 
a, 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 a man, a, a, a woman came to a preacher in his office and said, Pastor, do you see? I saw you coming. Did I not see you? I welcome you. He said, Pastor, do you see into the spirit world? God didn't call us to see into the spirit world. If he wants to show us, he will do that. And that will be once in a while. Even the, those who operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not constant. It's not constant. God, it, because it's not from them, it's from God. It is when God wants to reveal. When it becomes constant, it's an abuse. And God will not abuse his word. It's Satan that will abuse that thing. Some will say, hey, tell me, is my name in the book of life? Whom are you asking that question? Who has power to see whether your name is in the book of life? Tell me, which girl I should marry? Tell you which girl you should marry. Go and pray. In God's own time, as he's satisfied with your prayer, he will tell you. And he has many ways. He may not use a man to tell you. He may use yourself. He may use a circumstance. He has various ways. Why are you? Because somebody else can prophesy. You run to go and pile yourself there. And tell me this one. And tell me this one. Who told you? You want to turn him into idol? Because you lack faith with your God directly. So, use of salt for miracle. Salt. Why are you using salt? Elisha used salt. To do what? To heal water. Are you using your salt for water? Did Elisha use salt because he's, he, the, Elisha is called salt? Or the Lord dropped it in him? Just to display uniqueness. Do this in this place. Did you, how many times did you hear Elisha use salt? Okay, apart from Elisha, who again used salt from the Bible days? All through the, all through the New Testament era. Okay, whose person is using salt now? Demonized people. You are among demonized. Because no reasonable person is using salt. The just shall be judged by faith. The name of Jesus is what we should use. Which was given to us by Jesus himself. And it's in scripture. The word of God is what we should use. But you got your salt from where? You have made shipwreck of the faith. Oh, a preacher told me that if I can add salt during coronavirus, I think it was T.B. Joshua that, I, that said the people should use salt to wash themselves for coronavirus. Isn't that so? Did you hear it that time? Huh? How many of you heard it that time? Yes. Huh? Okay, Ebola. Did he help them? Many died. Because salt is dangerous to the body. To the hypertensive, salt will destroy you. Raw salt. But you're following preacher. You're not checking their works in the Bible. You're not checking their works in the Bible. You're not checking up whether what this man has said is right. Listen to what Paul said in First Corinthians chapter um, chapter ten, verse fifteen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15. He said, I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. That is Paul submitting his words for examination by you. By you don't judge these preachers. You just respect them. Even I preaching here now, judge my words by scripture. Judge them. That's why I'm so careful to make sure my utterances should be scriptural. I'm so fast in quoting scriptures because it is the balance of my speech. It is the authority of my preaching. Otherwise, I, 
so, uh, to ensure I don't say any other thing that I cannot justify it by scripture. So, but you just follow anybody because of his name. You didn't hear that God exalted his word above his name? Then, if God's word is exalted above his name, how much less the name of a preacher on earth? Can you compare his name to the world? So, deal carefully. Yes. Use of anointing objects, shoes, clothes, book, calendar, so, sand, what again? Flower. <laughs> Don't do those things. Go and sit on the seat where a preacher sat. That's idolatry. It will end your punishment. It is Jesus that gives anointing, not the seat of a preacher. You are talking about anointing of a preacher. Do you know his life? Anointing is different from holiness. So, be careful with those things. Yes. And others tell you, you must go to mountain for prayers or for water side. So people now are going to mountain. To do what? To pray. What happens to your house? What happened to your church? What happened? You can rent a hotel, a quiet place. And you mean pray everywhere. If you are, the reason why the, the Jewish people always climb the mountain for prayer is because as the mountains surrounded Jerusalem, is that what the Bible says? Mountains everywhere. Their houses live along with mountains. And beside they're wearing microphones at that time. If you're on top of mountain, it separates you from the congregation. And your words, as you speak them, the air the wind will help to amplify them as they descend down the valley to cause people to hear you. You think that we're going to mountain for no reason? Just because anointing is a mountain. Angels are on mountain. And so demons are waiting for you there. You go and you contract demon. You go, you contract demon. Because you are already in error. Your mind feels that Elijah went to mountain. Jesus went to mountain, and I will go to mountain. Where is the written scripture? Did you hear in one point that after the death of Christ, the, result, the, the disciples, apostles, gathered in the mountain, went to pray in the mountain? Did you hear Paul in all his ministry mentioning mountain or riverside? River. So that when you pray, the mammoth spirits that are in the water should see you. That is, they know you don't have anything in your body. Empty man. And you go. In fact, I said, those who have this honey, they know how to get the honey. You just go to the bush and put a pot on top of tree. Turn it like this. Why will come and enter inside? Honey. Go to the riverside. You are looking for honey from the river. Which are the honey? Demons. Because you have made yourself available. You have come to them. You are looking for spirituality. They will enter. And then you start seeing vision. You start prophesying. Say, the Holy Ghost. Which Holy Ghost? Damning the church of Christ. Spoiling people about with revelation and prophecies. Yes. Those things are not of God. Again, you must not wait to hear a voice or see visions when you are praying. Some people will say, no, wait quiet, wait quiet. Yes, listen, listen, God is speaking to you. Listen, why do you want to spoil these people? What if God decides not to talk? When you have waited, waited, and the time is over, Satan will take over. Yeah. I have heard your prayer. I have heard your prayer. From that time on, it's Satan that will be, will be talking to. Because you're looking for a voice. You want to see a vision by force. Not at God's prerogative. You want to see a vision. Since God cannot give you vision, when Saul, the Saul, King Saul, wanted a vision, a word, 
to direct him what to do. And God didn't answer him. Who took over? Which demon took over in the name of Samuel? That is it. Your yearning, hunger and thirst, after you will be filled. If it is after righteousness, you will be filled. If it is after a wrong thing, the wrong thing will fill you. They directed you to the riverside. They say you must hear a voice. Who told you? Pray your prayer and leave it there. If God chooses to speak a voice to you, he will do. Immediately or at another time. If God wants to show you vision, he will do. Immediately or at another time. You can't force God. God is not under you. Don't com compel him. He will do it at his good time. He's the God of wisdom. Use of prayer book. Hmm. You carry a book. Jesus, I want you, in the name of Jesus, cast out all the demons that are here. Jesus, I want money tomorrow. Jesus, you're talking to who? <laughs> is Jesus machine? That your heart is not involved. Pains, you're not coming out of the agony of your heart. You're reading prayers and think that God will answer. It's demonic God that will answer that prayer. Demonic God. Because your feelings are not involved. <laughs> Come. Your child is going to school and needs some money. And he came before you and said, everything is written down. Daddy, I will be going to school next week. Our teacher said, <laughs> and you're sitting there. Will you accept a child to do that? I, will you accept it? Where is your feeling? Where is your expression? I want to study this, this to know the truism of that matter. I want to read you. I want to know you. But now your eyes are not on me. Your eyes are on the book. How can I read your eyes and study who you are? And it's prayer book you are coming to God with. They deceive you. It's a deception. Waste of time. No record. You have not prayed. But you can read a prayer book to teach you how to pray when you come in the presence of God. Fine. But when you come, you express yourself. The book should teach you how to express yourself. How to talk to God. How to believe God. How to... Yes, that's alright. But don't come and read that book before God. As if you are reading it into a record... a, 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 a recording system. To record your words. Don't use prayer books. That's what the word of God is telling you. Yes. It's not of God. It is evil. Don't do those things. Amen. Amen. Don't do those things. It is evil. Yes. Use of anointing oil. I've told you. Only for the sick. Don't allow any man to anoint you with oil. No. Don't put it in your mouth. No. Don't, don't use anointing oil. In fact, the use of anointing oil on the sick is not that you can use it on yourself. Call the elders. Elders. And it is when you're critically sick. Because... The Lord shall raise him up from the bed of languishing. Which means you are lying on a bed of languishing. It's a serious case. Even that, in serious cases, not all, all the time the anointing oil was used and they were healed. So please don't give very little time to anointing oil. Only on sick. But Paul didn't use anointing oil throughout his ministry. Peter didn't use anointing oil throughout his ministry. Jesus didn't use anointing oil throughout his ministry. You cannot, you as a preacher, you may choose not to use anointing oil throughout your ministry. I am not using anointing oil. I've not used it once. In fact, I don't know whether I know anointing oil. <laughs> uh, they said they buy it from Jerusalem. Is granite oil also part of anointing oil? Eh? Okay, then I have known anointing oil. Then I have no anointed oil because I know my granite oil. Amen. 
Yeah. We have told you, use of brooms, use of cane to cane Satan is just a mockery altogether. Use of the blood of Jesus. They can buy blood of Jesus in the shop. Come, you yourself, are you thinking? Oh, they're not here. The people that are using the blood, they're not here. Otherwise, I'll be asking them, are you thinking? Okay, maybe you used it before. Did you use it before? The, what thought took you that Jesus died 2,000 years ago and shed the blood, and the blood that is the blood of a mummy, not fully bucket, and he has died 2,000 years ago, and they're bringing blood to you. You are not afraid that it's the blood of a human being they're using. What makes you to think it's the blood of Jesus? If we talk about blood, blood means life. It means the life of Jesus. When you are talking about the blood of Jesus, it means the life of Jesus that was taken away. Blood of Jesus that was shed for us. Life of Jesus that was killed for us. That's what it means. Is life of Jesus now a liquid? Is it now in liquid form? That's the question. If we say, plead the blood of Jesus, demand that because of the death of Jesus, which the devil was and his wicked men got involved, let the repercussion come upon them. That's why we're pleading the blood. That's why we're pleading the blood. And they deceive you by giving you a liquid. Pour in water and go and take bath. And you didn't know that's demonism? When they say don't shed blood, what do they mean? Huh? Don't kill a person. Because life is in the blood. So, the blood of Jesus is the shedding of the life of Jesus. Don't be deceived by these wicked preachers. Agents of Satan. Nadab and Abihu. Offering strange fires. Who shall all perish? Yeah, use of coconut. Coconut is for eating. They are attach another meaning to this eating. I say if you eat that if you eat coconut, what will happen? They put some spiritual meaning into it. Okay, if they break coconut, your your and water pours out. So your problem will pour out. That's herbalism. Herbalists. Witch doctors. Not normal herbalists, but the witch doctors. Wizards. Fulani malams. <laughs> Muslim malams. That are given to spiritism. Yeah, they want to be telling you those. Because demons are really involved. Yes. Use of rosary. That one they have known since. Catholicism and demonism is one. For your information. The Catholics are there. They are not worshipping Jesus. They are there to increase the number of Christians in the world. Politically. So that the other people should not take over. They should know, oh, we're big, we're big. Catholics are there. But not that Jesus is glorified there. The reverend fathers, many of them are immoral people. And yet they told them that if the reverend father sleeps with you, it's holiness. It's a holy thing. Holy. Confuse you. Abuse your Christian life defiles you, making you useless. No heaven. But they tell you it's the first church. You didn't know the Bible said the first that shall be last. It is now the last church. Because no Jesus there. They have left him. It's Hail Mary, mother of Jesus. Pray for us. It's Mary that is made like God now. Because 
The people in London, I say, Hail Mary, Mother of Jesus, pray for us. People in Kuali, I also pray, Mother, Hail Mary, Mother of Jesus, pray for us. The people in America, Mother of Jesus, Hail Mary, pray for us. People in Israel, Hail Mary, Mother of Jesus, pray for us. People in the bakery there, Mother, Hail Mary, Mother of Jesus, pray for, <laughs> pray for us. People in the hospital there, Mother, is she not an international woman? Is she not a universal woman? Only God reserves universal, universal, universality. Only God reserves universality. Not man. Mary cannot be here and be in America and be in Cameroon and be in the UK and be everywhere and be a human being. They have turned her to God, to a God. Then there are four persons in Godhead. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Mary, the Mother of Jesus. That's what the Catholics have done. They have made her universal. That she can hear. Paul, greater than Mary, the Mother of Jesus. Because he labored in this gospel. What about Abraham, the father of faith? What about them? Bible did not refer us to Mary, the mother of Jesus, but refer all women to Sarah, the wife of Abraham, as the mother of faith. Then what about her? Why are you not thinking that she is universal too? A departed sense. Gods? A departed sense. Gods? That you think they can be everywhere. What makes Mary different? God used her. As God used Elizabeth to bring forth a son to announce Jesus, God used Mary to bring forth a son to save the world. And God is using me now to save the world. We are all the property of the living God. Who needed God to save us? Born into sin as Mary was born into sin. Because she was a daughter of Adam. What now makes her so special? That she is now a universal God or goddess. Is that not idolatry? Christianity entered into the hands of idols. Where the female idol is more powerful than the male idol. So, in those days therefore, since... Two people were renowned, Jesus and Mary. Jesus a man, Mary a woman. It is the goddess that is made more powerful. They lifted up Mary in the paganic world, in the dark ages, where pagans took over Christianity. They lifted up Mary to stand for the, more, the goddess, which is a woman. Mary lifted up her and then brought Jesus down. In Sao Tome and Principe, a country in Central Africa where I worked for a time, there is a feast there that the Catholics there observe yearly. In this feast, during this feast, the people carrying the image of Mary, the exalted goddess, will, will come and maybe stand somewhere. The people also carrying the image of Jesus. The similar person is a male one. You know, they call queen of the cross. Have you had king of the cross before? That is what happened in the realm of darkness. They exalt the feminine. Maybe because Eve was the one that gave, ring, that gave a chance to Satan to reign the world. So they exalted the goddess. So, the people carrying Jesus' image will come and bow before the people carry uh, Mary's image and say, we, Jesus is apologizing to his mother for why must he address you, woman? Why must he address Mary? When he was in the cross, he addressed woman, behold thy son. Pointing uh, uh, Apostle John. Why did you uh, call your mother woman? You didn't do well. Apologize for it. So the people will bow down. Terrible darkness is going on in Catholicism. 
and you say you will be in Catholic until you die. You won't see God forever. All of you plus the priests and reverend fathers, there is no place in the kingdom of heaven for you. Nothing. You are the first church that have become the last. Harden your heart by demons. It will open in hell. You will weep in hell forever. But get out of Catholicism. It has nothing to do with Jesus. And you who are Catholics, they say, oh, we're doing Catholic revival. Well, that's, what do we call them? What do they call it? Charismatism. Charismatic Catholic. And you still take Hail Mary, Mother of Jesus. It's a, it's a step out, but you have not come out. A step out of that place. But you have not come out. You must tear clear from that idol worship. That is it. So, avoid all those things. Use of handkerchief, I've told you. Use of mantles, I've told you. Avoid those things. Washing and bathing with water. They carry you to the water, woman, and naked you. How many of you do the priest sleep with in, beside the water? Because he sees your nakedness, the body will not. Let's finish right before we bath. Is that what they're telling you? Let us finish. Let's finish enjoyment. Then I will bath you. Is that what they do to those women? Do they even care that the people are sleeping with them? They're looking for miracle. They're under spell. Don't go and be bathed by any person, any woman. They use lies. Are you not seeing that those people are telling lies? Now, when those things don't work, what do you say? Don't you feel that it's a deception? You are in a world of deception. You are moving from one world to another. Deception to deception. One place to another. In deception. The thought didn't come to you. That's what God was saying. Ah, ah, where this idol worship has done reasoning? That I cut down a tree. And I used part of the tree to cook food for myself and eat. I use part of the tree to warm myself during cold season. How am I now saying the remaining part of the tree is the God that created me? Which reason? What reason? And you're worshipping it. Are you not having senses? That is it. This thing that you are doing, you are not having senses that you are under lies. Use of chains and padlocks. <laughs> padlocks. Use of chain and padlock. Ah, what do I even say about it now? The man that was bound by chains is the maniac of Gadara. That madman that caught the chains. And they brought the chains on you. What, are you not thinking? The chain they used to tie a madman is the chain they say you should go and buy. That you are going to chain Satan. Have you seen Satan before? My brethren, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But rather, reprove them. Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. We want to run up now. Have no fellowship. Ephesians chapter 4. Yes. Have no fellowship. With unfruitful works of darkness. But rather, Reprove them. That's the word of God to you. Take this word. Yes. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5. Let's read. Let's read verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days 
are evil. We are for being not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk wherein there is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That's the work of God. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. We have revealed these things not so that you don't go to them. They are unfruitful works of darkness. If there is delay in God answering you, wait for him. Life experiences delay. Wait for God. He that maketh haste or he that hasteneth with his feet commits sin. You are, give me now, give me now. You are sinning. Wait for him. God should be your satisfaction and not material things. Stay with your righteousness. Don't defile it. What are these strange practices? Can you list? Yes. List maybe two. Hallelujah. Strange practice in the ministry, one of them is anointing oil, telling people to be drinking anointing oil or flour, telling people to be using flour to pray. I was a victim of it before I came to Hurimo. Flour? Many, yes, many years ago. Yes. I was in a ministry, I was a victim of it, that I was so deceived by these so-called pastors and prophets and prophetess. There was a time they told me to go and buy flour in the market and bring it to the bishop for the bishop to bless it for me. Two flour that one will be in the headquarters church, one will be in my house. I will be using it to pray. Then be drinking anointing oil, which I did. When I came to Horimo, I, I said, no, I am into another thing. I decided to pray to God that God should forgive me. I take that flower in my house and destroy it. I went to the headquarters church. I didn't need to go and ask the bishop anything. I just go straight to the altar. I remove the flower. Go and throw it away. After praying, I tell God, I'm sorry. I did it in ignorance. I destroyed the flower before I went and told the bishop that that flower they used to do, that they told me to buy for my blessing, for fruitfulness, whatever. If they think it's not working, I have removed it, I have destroyed it. So the bishop was not happy at all. So before you know, I have done what was in my heart. That was before uh, when, I came to When you went to the altar, how many flowers did you see there? There was no flower. It was only that my own that was uh, there. Where was the man dealing only with you? <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Yes, another person. Give Nimas two strange practices in the church. Any person again? Praise the Lord. Yes. The use of sand and holy water. I was actually a victim of use of sand and holy water when I was attending Champion Royal in Kubwa, 2018. The man would tell us to, when he was building his pool of Bethsaida, he would tell us to go and park the sand in the pool of Bethsaida. That anytime I want to pray in the morning, we should just um, just spread the sand all over our house. When we get to office, we we'll spray it all over our offices. But it's always a bad so. You then, have pull up the test there yes, in Abuja. Yes, in Kubwa Champion Royal. There's a place there called Pool of Besida. That water. Anybody that enter the water, you will not come out the same way you enter. That is, they say your healing will be complete. And the holy. How water, many of you had a pool of Bethesda in Abuja? Your church. That church named that place Pool of Bethesda. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no Pool of Bethesda in Nigeria. Mm. Not in Africa. I'm telling you. 
is only it is restricted to Israel mm. and not in this generation. Mm. Okay, go, go ahead. Sun and and holy water. And holy water. They call it oloro water. What makes it holy? <laughs> that one, if they say if you want to go out in the morning, we should sprinkle it in our mouth. Any word we say to anybody come to pass, and that is true. As we sprinkle it in the morning, as we are going out, there was one Okada man, I told him, Okada man, there's power in my tongue, go. Don't cheat me. Because if you carry this my money and go, you will not come. This money we lost and lost with others. So he was scared and he was like, oh yeah, take your money. So it's truly... It's just trade that you are saying. It's not that oh. it is working. <laughs> you use trade. If you tell somebody, if you don't give me my money, I've gone here. Will he not give you money? <laughs> so that is it. <laughs> Guy, these terrible people. Yes. <laughs> let, let, no, let them walk. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This didn't happen to me in the Apostolic Church mm. when I was. I first challenge in my head. So we went to fasting and uh, the church was going on. The prophet started to work on somebody and told me and told me a lot of things, but I didn't understand it's our dialect. Just talk like that. And I asked the other prophetess where they were gathering. What is she saying? They cannot say. Some said, they say, she said that they should cut, a, remove flower on the pulpit, one flower, and give to me. So that I will, when I want to bath, I will put that flower in my water and bath. So I did that. Instead, the uh, uh, headed to come, uh, co to come down. The headed. He came ah, it's angry. too much. It's too, it's too much. So I went to the pastor. I told the pastor, say I don't see any improvement. No. The pastor said that I should leave it now. Even my daughter came, came and said, do you know the meaning of flower that you are using? I should throw the flower. And again, I had a challenge. One pastor, our pastor said that 12 o'clock, I should go out naked and pour water on my body every 12 o'clock. So I did that because I am in top family. And my aunties, the other auntie, went to another church at that night. She came back in the night, midnight. She saw, I don't, I don't even know that person is coming. I, I just, I just <laughs> ran out, I ran in. At once, I was scared. You were so naked was, at that time? I was bathing at, at that 12 o'clock. Uh, so since then, I said I will not do such a thing. I, I, I don't want what, to do it. What do you think that your auntie will say she saw? No, she was, uh, uh, she went to prayer. So uh, she came back late. Uh, uh -huh. And saw you? Or you ran before uh, she saw uh, you? Uh, so I thought it was ghost. <laughs> so I thank God for God to even for me to come to this Abuja. I really thank God. When my we heard about this, uh, our mommy Linda's uh, video, my daughter said, huh, "We will reach this Abuja." Now you, uh, at that time I was on Ogun State. I think in my heart, say, mm, "If you have small money, you will start to go about." So one day I, I heard the phone say, Mommy, prepare, we will go to Abuja. Because me, I don't like long distance. I know what happens to me. So when I told people in the market that I was selling, say, hmm, Abuja, oh, you are so rough, finish. Hey, I, when I reached Abuja, I said something like this. But I really thank God for this church because the way they preach, in fact, I really thank God for making me to know the error. Even the thing that I did, I restored back. I told my daughter when she go to a village, let her restore that thing back. 
So I really thank God. You will see your mistakes. The Holy Spirit will tell you your mistakes. He will tell you your error, the thing that you're supposed to do. So I really thank God for this church. How, many, how long have you stayed here now? This In, is almost one year. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, strange practices in the ministry. I have many, but I'll mention a few. In, uh, in the church where I left, we used to use, the bishop used to use blood, uh, blood of snail. Blood of? S snail. Snail. Yes. It has blood. <laughs> so the water, if you break the under, the bottom, uh. Uh, it will be coming with something like blood and whitish. Okay. Yes. Then coconut, palm leaf, and ashes, and many others. So as myself, I was a victim of coconut and the uh, blood of snail. When I was depressed, he said I should bring snail, three snail, three coconut, that I will use it. So I will break coconut, I will use the water, then break snail, I will drink some of the water and use some of the water to rub myself. So even these ashes and the, the um, a palm leaf, a palm leaf, then you will use it for people that said their case are critical, that wanted to die. So they will spread ashes on ground like saku, then they will use palm leaf to tie their hand, tie their leg, tie their neck, and they will lie down on that ashes. So they will be praying for them. Some of them, they will use white cloth to cover them, red cloth to cover them, to pray for them. So these strange practices are going on in the church. But we thank God for holy more. Since I came to this place, I've seen a pure service and praying to God, and God is answering our prayer. So this is my uh, witness. Now, we want to say there is difference between the spiritists and their practices with pure herbal medicine. Are you getting that? The herbalists, some of them are not even born again. They say if you use this in combination of this, it will produce this in your, it will produce this result. That is not dealing with prayer. Do it like this, then I will pray for you. No. But these spiritists are doing these formulas and are saying power is inside this formula. Spiritual power is inside this formula. You, that's why you see the difference. Hence, they are turning you to Satan. They are making you to remove your faith from Jesus to uh, uh, substances. Or else, they are adding to your faith in Jesus. That your faith in Jesus is not enough. I've forgotten what somebody said exactly. He asked that he had been even in this whole room. I think I did in Ibadan. Yes, this question came from Ibadan. And uh, he has been asking God for his need. And he's still trusting in God. He came at a friend that says, Ah, you're, you're praying only. Add this one to, either you should add some eggs or some what, and gather them together and use them in his prayers. The answer will come. So these are spiritists. Separate herbal treatment from spiritism. Is that un understood? So don't think herbal treatment, which will say, use snail, use this, boil the water and drink. It will help in this, in this and in that. It's a different thing. Yes, let's continue. Praise the Lord. I have two that is common. One of it is to push away the name of Jesus from the church. Hmm? I say one of it, one of the strange practices I've observed yes. is trying to push away the name of Jesus from the church. Okay. I observe that a pastor will come up just maybe at the beginning of the service, he will say, let the church answer amen. Everybody will say amen. Let the church say amen. What have you established in whose name, in whose authority? 
You will really hear pastor there say, in the name of Jesus. No, they don't use it again. They say, let the church say amen. And many people ignorantly follow this way. Many churches adopt it that way. That you really hear the name of Jesus in the church. That is one. Two is in the issue of prayer. Many churches no longer pray again. They say, ah, the book of Psalm, they were singing prayer. So if they organize a night vigil, what they do is to bring expert that will sing prayer. And the church will all throw rejoice. Do hardly, they will say, how can somebody stand for one hour and pray? They don't do that. They will bring somebody, will lead them three hours, four hours, and they will be enjoying themselves. So those are strength practices that many churches have already adopted. Praise the Lord. Is it this Catholic singing of prayers? Not Catholic. This one is talking Mount Zion, all those churches, apostolic, they are into that now. Uh, they're doing like Catholics now? Not Catholic way of singing. This one is, they, they sing it as a song and it will take hours. So everybody is now praying? Not, you, you hardly hear real prayer as we pray. No, uh, But it is done in the name of prayer? In the name of prayer. But one person will be singing, others will jump, some will be crying, some will be mourning, some, it, it is like that. But these people that sing, they are not Christian at all. Some really go to church, but they are expert in singing these things. Some as an album in the music, and they will bring them in. As they are singing, money is flowing at the altar, and that oh. is what the pastor is uh, interested. I'm telling you. They have removed the people from Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. I thank God for making, giving me the grace to come to this place today. And I thank God on behalf of my sister-in-law, Sister Kate, that said I should come. The Bible said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Mm. There are so many uh, strange activities in many churches. And they have measured so many. There are some, they use broom. They will ask you to go and buy broom. The day they will call it broom days, you will see people will be packing brooms to the church. They will say, you'll be using the broom to sweep witches and wizards away from your house. You will use it to wipe your enemy, this, that. I will, I will be watching them. At times, they will ask you to bring K. K, they will, they will say, flog your enemy, flog your enemy. I thank God, all those kind of churches, I hardly go to all those activities. But coming here today, I still see the truth about the word of God. Even when I was telling a sister here, I said, where did you get this book? Before I will leave this place, I know I must get that manual. Praise the Lord. So, they will call, in, in uh, Bini, where we came from, there is a church, they call it Hebrew church. That church, they use misery. They said it's a misery church. They said they prepare blood of Jesus by themselves. I will be wondering, how can you get blood of Jesus inside a bottle? That is what they will be drinking. That is what they will be using. Some they use salt. So many. But I thank God for the exposition of the word of God. And I'm carrying this news by the special grace of God, as I'm living here, I will ask my sister-in-law to give me money to buy that book. And I will go and use it to tell them that where they have their power, that is not where the real power is. It's from the word of God and the word of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Who is your sister-in-law? Sister Kate from Benjo. Okay, Sister Kate. Where is Sister Kate? Eh? Huh? Okay, let us see Mom Melinda after service. It's okay. Yes, Mom. Praise the Lord. Thank you. My own encounter was in, in Port Harcourt, OPM, OPM, Omega Power Ministry. Uh, there's the one that do coconut night. I was involved because I was watching them in a, a YouTube. So we see their power and all that. So me and my elder sister, I say, ah, it's good to visit them all. And I visited them in Port Harcourt. We They break coconuts. As you are breaking coconuts, all your problem, 
those who are looking for marriage, 2018, yeah. Those who are looking for husband, just write the dates, it will happen. So I was like, so all these testimonies, God work like this. So I was very happy. I said, Tom, I will go and uh, join them. So, but after everything, when I discovered that they were a, a, they were a liar, is because, when mommy, when I visited mommy's uh, testimony, there's one part three, he made sure his name. I said, eh, are you serious? So these people, it's not really God that is working with them. But my pastor in Lagos, he used sand and he will wash your head as he's washing your head. Just give yourself two weeks. Testimony will come as in the man, the person will come and say, Ah, they have given me contracts, they are doing that, do this, do that. So we'll be wondering, but when I do my own, nothing will happen. <laughs> so the thing will be annoying me. Why did God <laughs> hate me like this? So, <laughs> so, but I now saw the truth that they are really deceiving us. Now, yes. See, I want you to know, God says, mention the name of these false preachers. It is by Sister Linda mentioning their names that this lady now know and got delivered from Omega Ministry. But many of you will say, why are you calling their name? You are hiding Satan. You... If you have seen a thief coming to this community and you're not calling his name for people to know him, you say, there's a thief that, you, that usually come to know, comes to this community. Who will know him? If you pass him on the way, who, how will you know that he's the thief? God says, call their names. And as we call their names, they don't have power to do anything because we called it by God. But you, who will just go and be calling their names anyhow, did God send you? then you will have a problem. The demon said, Paul I know and Jesus I know. Those ones I can do them not to because they are using the authority of God. But you, who are you? Trouble has come for you. It's, you get it now. When God instructs you to do it, do it. And don't be afraid to serve people. Amen? Now, our sister said, the church where she belonged to uh, the pastor will wash the head of somebody and give that person two weeks. The person is coming to give testimony. And when he is giving testimony, people are giving offering to partake, I partake of this grace, I partake of this anointing. So, the pastor and the person giving testimony will share that money. Because the pastor arranged with him. They're doing the business together. The pastor arranged with him, I am going to wash your head. After two weeks, come and give testimony. We're making business. We're making business. Then we will share the money. And as other people are hearing the testimony, they are also coming in. It's a business. It happened to me. Do you know how it happened to me? <laughs> That was in 1976. I was somewhere with my elder brother. Then I needed to travel back home. He gave me my transport money. So when I came to Motor Park, I saw people gathered in a place and I went there. You hear? What is making the people excited here? So when I came, I saw that somebody will carry a piece of, um, a wrapped piece of paper, raise it up. Okay, this one, how much will you pay? This one said, I pay this. I pay this. Okay, can you bring this? I pay this. Then he will tear it. Money will be inside. Maybe you pay five naira. Ten naira is inside. It's your own. Carry. Hey, you will be rejoicing. I say, I, I'll make more money. <laughs> I will make more money here. This is my transport money. <laughs> my brother. So, I watch, I watch. He carried another one. 
He raised it up. How much will he bring? I came in. I, I will bring it. <laughs> so I gave my money. He broke it and gave me the piece of paper. I opened it, nothing was inside. Hey! <laughs> I will not travel. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Leave the rest of the story. <laughs> ha! Huh? To come out here, they are all arranged people. So that is why you think it's, uh, some are making it, some are not. It's arrangement. Yes, in other people. Praise the Lord. My yes. own is uh, in Catholic. When we were there, Rosalie was a major thing there. If you are a Catholic and you don't know how to, to count bees as rosary, you are not a really Catholic. Uh -huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, even, even uh, some, some, some Reverend Father themselves, they used to count our bees. And another one is, when, you, when, when a Reverend Father came here to start Mass, he must kiss table. That their table that they set, they must kiss it. And you, as a member, you are passing across the frontage, or even, even when you are behind, you must bow down. I never know where those things are in Bible. That so, when you are like like pulpit is yeah. when you are when you want to move from this side to cross this side, you must do like this. You must bow down. Anglican, and I think from Catholic, then Anglican copied it. He has no scriptural meaning. Praise the Lord. That is the one I have. Thank you. He has no scriptural meaning. God is, God is everywhere. Praise the Yes. I'm James Ayuba. I thank God for this teaching this morning. Before I know this truth, yeah. when I was single, I found myself in a church. Though I was going to Equa then, but I have the hungry to visit other churches. I went to, that is living faith. I was there even to the stage to baptism. They gave us, we buy a, a white handkerchief that the bishop pray over it. We keep it jealously that we'll be using it. But I discover that if I'm using this handkerchief or oh, headache, if headache I, I attack me or if I dream bad dream, if I use that handkerchief as they teach us, go round the room be just shaking it like this shaking it like this all around the room he said you will not dream bad dream again i've been using it i discovered that it's not working for me so when he reached to the day that they announced for baptism i was preparing together with my uncle that we used to go together in his car so I was preparing to go to the church that day. I heard a voice. So I said, somebody standing at my back. He said, don't go to that church. I was listening. He said, check all the pamphlets they give you. Read them. Is there any genuine testimony there that somebody got salvation? So... When I hear that voice, I obey. I pick all the, this thing, the pamphlet. I sat down that morning. When I read them, I discovered that there is no any genuine testimony that somebody got born again. All the testimony, miracle child, miracle house, miracle job, and the rest of them. I told my uncle, I said, today I'm not going to the church again. He said, I want to go to Equa. He said, why? You want to die in Equa? 
So that day I stood on my decision. I didn't go back again. That is okay now, so that we don't go off from you. you are, we have gotten just the point we need. That is the strange anchor chief. Yes. 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 The next person. Praise the Lord. Mm. The use of soul and uh, anointing oil was so common in our own church denomination, which is a new life in Christ in Equatorial Guinea. There in the morning, our pastor also used to use oil and soul, saying that he, in the morning blessing, the morning blessing, everybody will come and dip his hand in water, in that oil, and take a little bit of salt and suck it. That is morning blessing. And the afternoon, he will still do the same thing. So the thing has, it was common. And another time, he came to with another um, strange doctrine, which is using, you, uh, uh, like say, for instance, on our wedding, he use, he take the ring and use it, he drop it inside the oil and drop it inside the soil. Quoting scripture saying that uh, Elijah used, uh, Elisha used saw to purify the water and he's using now saw this ring to purify, he using, he taking ring to anticipate the saw, saying that he wants to purify the ring. So he has been doing, doing that. And eventually when I came now to understand and this truth. when he purifies it, everybody drinks it. He, when he purifies the ring now, he now take the ring and put it. He went, oh. he went, he went. Uh -huh. okay. That's what he used to do. So eventually when I came to understand that this is not good, so I just say bye-bye to that. I want you to appreciate that God brought you here. It's dead that is walking worldwide. Many are not Christians. The Bible says if you keep 99% of the law and miss in one, what happens to you? You are offended in all. That is what is going on in the churches now. That's why Satan is quiet with them. They have gone. They have been deceived. Yes, my brother. Praise the Lord. Uh, that is, uh, there are some silent, strange practices that we should not keep quiet about. The CAC believe in the use of water. They will bring water to the altar. Maybe it will spend like seven days there. They will pray to it that after maybe seven days or whatsoever time they profess to give them, then you come and use the water. You'll be picking some, you'll be uh, dropping some inside the water. If you want to bathe, you put some there. If you want to drink, you put some there. So any uh, Christian that is not careful could fall into that uh, kind of strange practice. And that one is uh, praying without your clothes on. That if you want to pray at a particular hour of the day, you have to pull your clothes and, and then become naked. And then you pray. So those are strange uh, practices. There was another one that a brother told me about. Say, ah, this is strange. He said that uh, you must have water in your room. That there's a place you will make, uh, like a sacred place at the corner of your room. Maybe you arrange some clothes there and they put, and then you'll be praying there every time. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You know, Baba Lola, the founder of CAC, was an illiterate man. And but was sincere in his heart. And the Lord did something he did in the life of Paul by blessing water used by him. The Lord caused the water to carry some powers, healing virtues, to heal people. But that was for a time. That did not even continue through the lifetime of uh, what's his name? Huh? Babalola. It didn't continue. Just like in Paul. The Lord used handkerchief on Paul in the body of who? Paul alone. Never Peter, never James, never John, never anybody but Paul alone. Just as the Lord used the shadow of Peter, not the shadow of Paul, not the shadow of Jesus, not the shadow of him, just shadow of Peter to heal the sick. And did that continue? No, for a heightened period. So, the church today are into the use of this uh, apron, handkerchiefs, not knowing it has been abolished right in time of Paul. Paul said, a, a brother, that Paul said, I have I left sick which means 
There's no handkerchief, no apron, healing people at that time. Timothy, take no longer water, but take a little wine for your often stomach infirmity. Often infirmity. If handkerchief and apron was there, is it not to send Timothy with them, to send them to Timothy? Or Timothy, who is even distributing them, should not use a part for himself? Those things stopped in a moment. Might that one week, one month, three months, or a particular time they ceased. So when this, the water ceased being uh, inspired, empowered by Jesus over Babalola's life, the CAC took over and Satan took over. And now put their faith on water. They go about carrying gallons and cherry cans and drums of anointing water. Just to destroy their faith. When you go to heaven, you will wonder, where are the CAC people? Maybe an angel there will say, their faith in water destroyed their faith in Jesus. So they couldn't make it to heaven. But Babalola is there. Why? God inspired him. He was an illiterate man. God inspired him to do that. You who have, you are even professors, you can read the Bible. You have degree, you have masters, you have, uh, you are a professor of divinity. You cannot know that this, in, in, uh, in, um, what do we call them? Objects are not to be held onto. The Lord warned the children of Israel concerning any manner of object in heaven above, on earth, or under the sea, that they should never put their faith on them. Did he not say so? But this is the same God that instructed Moses, make a serpent out of bronze, brass, and hang it on the tree, that whosoever was bitten by the serpent should look to it. They did that, but that was for just that wilderness of, wilderness of sin or so. That it was just for that period. It never happened again. But after about 1,000 years, because the, 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 the serpent of brass was preserved historically, the children of Israel discovered it after about 1,000 years and started worshipping it. That's man. The mind is looking for an object to worship. So that is what's happening in the church today. They are looking for something physical to turn their faith to and live this life, I mean, to turn their heart to not the life of faith. They just shall live by faith. They want to touch. They want to feel. That is man. Run away from that. Yes, I want to hear more. I think there's a sister always putting her hands somewhere. Yes, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Uh, actually, we thank God for the topic of today. Uh, the area that I want to share is that there are some strange practices that is going on now. That is, it's no longer related to all this sun, handkerchief, and all this. Because... We're a new generation. Yes. So I went to a conference with a particular man. That man is a man of God. They called him a man of God. So the woman of God, that later heard of my preaching, I preach holiness, righteousness. She said, no, they must include me as a second speaker in that conference. So when I was to go with the man of God, uh, the Lord led the me to... man of God in court... Uh, yes, uh -huh. uh, that's in court. Mm. So the Lord led me to buy a book. That was when I came to the conference, so I bought a book, uh, Baptism by the Blazing Fire. The book very small like that. So when I was to go to that conference, the Lord, the Holy Spirit now caused me that I should study that book to the end. So when I begin to study the book, it's a testimony from some, uh, a particular church, either it's at Korea, sure. some of the people that read, they will know the books. So I was reading that book. I started studying that book from the motor. Because I was traveling to Adama State. From Adama State, I have to travel to Adama State. So I was reading. I began to enjoy the book. I refused to sleep. I went to my younger brother's house in Yola. Where I said, I, I keep reading the book. I keep reading. I said, I will not sleep until I see the end of this book. So when I was reading the book, reading, I think almost around 12 o'clock in the night. Sleep, come and carry me. I went out. I said, let's wake up. I said, no, I must finish this book. I woke up again. I picked the book. 
until when I finished. Now the Lord began to open my eyes to see the difference between the original Jesus and the strange Jesus. In that the, book. Uh, in that book. Sometimes you see the man of God come and say, ah, uh, if you close your eyes now, if you see Jesus, shout hallelujah. So the Lord was showing me that that strange Jesus, they used to call and it will appear. He say, it's a strange spirit. It's not original Jesus. He's not the one. So when I went to the conference, I never know that the Lord was communicating to me through this book because I will experience practically that this man of God, so-called man of God, we actually call that spirit to appear. So when we went to the conference, by the grace of God, as I arrived at the conference, he as the first speaker, so he was not there. So people already gathered. So I was given the opportunity first to speak to the congregation. Uh, and the team became very powerful. So when that thing finished, when they, it is the time of the man of God to come and speak. So he, I was monitoring very carefully, strictly I was just following him to see what will come out from the mouth of this man. And the Lord told me that if this man do not preach salvation first, then I should know that this man is not truth. That is what is, 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 is uh, uh, there is no holiness in his word. So I begin to study this man very carefully. Every step this man has taken, I'll be watching him very well. So I did now, according to what I read inside that book, when the man came up, he didn't pray any salvation or there's any serious message. Ha, ah, close your eyes. Ha, ah, now somebody will see Jesus. If he sees you, shout, hallelujah. So the church and many congregations has gathered. I, I sit at the front, you know, as a preacher. So we sit on one area like that. I was, I was laughing my heart. I said, why? Let me keep watching because God has revealed something to me. So I keep watching. So I shout. Somebody shout at the back, ah, hallelujah. This and that. I said, that's the spirit that appeared there. I said, that's not Jesus. It's a strange demon. So from that time, I really realized what many men of God are doing these days, sir. Did they you don't... tell them in the church that they were seeing vanity? You know, yeah, later when we even gathered with the escorts of the, of the church, so I was telling them because I know some of them, so I was telling them, this is if I, they didn't want to bring probably back to me. Ah, like I'm trying to get against the man of God. Mm -hmm. All this and that. I say, man, I'm a speaker, they invite me. So he himself is a speaker, they invite me. I saw this and that. So when I later went back alone, I discovered that they have, they have failure in the area of understanding what I'm trying to explain to them. So I forget about the whole okay. thing. Okay, thank so, you very much. The last point, sir. Mm -hmm. So the last one is, today, you will see them, they use power in their eyes. They say, look at me, look at me. He was just like that. Somebody in the congregation said, just look at me. They don't use handkerchief or anointing oil again. They say, look at me, look at me. So when you look at them, they, the power carry you. All this and that. Oh, so some of them, their power is in their palms. You see that? So they don't pass through some of all this uh, handkerchief, anointing oil, and all this other. Today, a Christian must be very sensitive and very detective. Even though that's if I mean, you look power. at them, what will happen? The power will just carry you and you fall. I say, look at me, look at me. You see somebody from God. You, you, you. Just give a chance. Look at me, look at me. So when you just look at the man of God, you see the power will carry you and you will knock down. Or some of them, the Lord revealed to me once. He said there are power in their hands because I've used one crusade. The Lord was showing me there's power in the palms of this man. So when I saw it, and people have been saying, right down there, I was telling other people, you are from where? This one is from Sierra. I said, what are you doing there? I said, leave this place. So when I discovered that I will not even succeed, I just left the place. That's how it is. So today, many people have been deceived. And we, the believer, we have to be very careful. They don't pass through all because they know that people they are discovering. They have it. advanced. So, uh, so that's another area. So mm. we should be very careful. The Lord will help us. Thanks. And think maybe TB Joshua helped them a lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I was a witness of few of them uh, when I was young. I was sick and uh, my mom took me to a woman. They called her a uh, prophetess that she has gone to Jerusalem. And she came with the uh, Jerusalem sand that they got it from where they buried uh, Jesus and that the sand is working. So when my mom heard of that, instead of taking me to the hospital, she took me to her place. And then she uh, fished the sand and mixed it inside water, gave me to drink. So when she gave me, I said, this is sand now. It's, it's not good. So I should shut up. I should drink. <laughs> I look at the sand. They were dirty all over it. I said, okay, I will drink, but let me remove all of this dirt from it. I said, mm -mm, that one, that one will work. Drink it like that. <laughs> I said, no, I will not drink. They forced me to drink. <laughs> so I had to, because I'm small, I had to just drink and, and just drink. So... Is, is wrong all over there. And people are running to her. And nothing worked. After drinking it, I, I had a stomach upset and all. 
So bad things are really happening in the church. After that, the, the, all of her what what didn't work, she took me to another woman that she had a back to send her anointing oil. That the back to send her work, that whosoever that have, uh, inflicted me with any kind of sickness, that I had to go back. So when she took me to her, the woman asked me to open my eyes. I opened my eyes. She brought out the, the spray, say back to send her spray. She sprayed it on my eye. Hey! It was terrible, very hot, because it contained ethano ethanoic acid, like alcohol, very hot. I was shouting my eyes, my eyes, they were happy. That is working, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> that is working. I was so angry that I want to hit her. It's my mom that held me. That, you see, that there's a spirit in him, it's working. <laughs> so these people, they are so wicked. I was crying my eyes because it's so hot. They would have blinded my eyes. So I wanted to react. They held me. That that is the spirit manifesting. It's working. These people are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Say Thank back you. to send that anointing, anointing oil that contains ethanoic acid that can affect the eyesight. Then they asked me to, after that, it didn't work. So when she heard of another man again, said they should take me there. They took me to the man that the only place our prayer could be answered is to go to the riverside and pray there. That we should not pray anywhere. We should only pray in the riverside. And they took me to the river that I should be praying there. That every day I should go there and pray. That I should not pray in the house. That I should go to the riverside and pray. And I went to the riverside, see them as a young man, small boy, who want to be healed. Instead of my mom <laughs> taking me to the hospital, took me there. I went down, sat down, prayed that God heal me, God heal me. By the riverside, I should pray to the river. Hi, it was terrible. So evil things are really happening out there. And they see, call themselves church. You can see where we say there's darkness in the church. The whole world is filled with darkness. These are darkness. Truth is not there. And they brought this darkness in the name of the church. You are running from one to other. Same darkness. It will be a surprising thing that you will be in a church like this and learn this truth. And tomorrow you say you are no more continuing. You go back into darkness. And your own will be thick darkness. Greater darkness. I'm telling you, if the light in you becomes darkness, it will be darkness indeed. Yes. Uh, actually, I want to bless God for his mercy that has brought me out of such denomination. I grew up being a member of Mountain of Fire. And when you, when you go deep in Mountain of Fire, I notice all this evil practice there. We have we make use of uh, bangles. And that bangles, you are to wear it everywhere you are going. And there is this one that we always do every first Saturday of the month. We say, power must change hand. In that power must change hand, the, the handkerchief, we call it Mount Sudier. The handkerchief that we use, it will be given to us from the headquarters. And every member of the church must have it. And this use of anointing oil also. So a time came that within me, I was like, I don't like such practice. My mom, she will be like, you must have it. You must practice it. So the thing was a body to me. Along the way, I felt sick, a terrible sick, that my mom, for her to take me to the hospital, she took me to one ministry. And in that ministry, they said they are, they are going to bath me. They, are use a, they have to put a hot water. And after uh, boiling the hot water, they use it to wash my head. That after washing it, that the headache will go and the sickness will disappear. My dear, after it, the thing did not go. The sickness becomes so severe that my mother have to go and get drugs for Who me. Who bath you, man or woman? The prophets. Just Perfect. in hair. Okay, I will remove hair. my scarf. Then okay. you now use the hot water to bath the hair. I think there is also prophet about the whole body. Is so, that not so? Then they will, after bathing, they will say that the sickness will go. And then the use of sand. They will ask us to uh, get sand from the altar. Then we use it and put it in the water. If you want to bath, you use it and bath. Or you want to drink, you take it and drink. Maybe when you are sick, you just put the sand in the water, turn it and drink it. 
Praise the Thank Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My own is when I was in Omakatri, there is one woman, a prophet. Immediately you go to that woman, the woman will told you that your brother wants to kill you or this person wants to kill you. So when you go back, go to the tree. Sometimes you still go and cut orange, cut into three pieces, full water in the drum. Let everybody in your family drink and bathe. Sometimes she will ask you, pack sand in your house and bring it. When you bring it, you say, everybody in that house must use that sun in the night. So when, if the person refuses to use it, that is the person, that person is a witch. So when they bring it one day, I say, I will not use it. So my grandmother now started calling me a witch because I refuse to use the sun. Sometimes we tell you this is your problem with your husband. Is your, this person is doing it. The person wants to kill you. Go and put this son on the road that is close to your house. This thing will not happen. Immediately you are coming. Come God has already told me what is going on. So go and do this. Go and do this. And they are liars. Who verifies them? They are liars. Telling every kind of lies. This person is the one doing it. Oh, this one happened like this. Oh, this is just lies. Ye are of your father the devil. The deeds of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abort not in the truth. If he speaketh lie, he speaketh of himself. For he is a liar and the father of it. So where do you think that these people will tell you the truth? Where? I know of a woman who went somewhere to a herbalist because she's sick. The herbalist put some nail inside leaves and boil water and then use the leaves to bring out the thing they shot into that woman <clears throat> and brought it out and put it on the ground and put it on the ground or whatever. It was a nail. See the nail they shot into you. Hey. But he provided for the nail. And now he has taken glory. You pay money. Add sorrow to sorrow. That is the business. Lies they are doing there. Yes, let's go on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to share this rose so that I will also learn from it. Though it did not happen to me directly, it was my husband that shared it to me. He said sometime in his life, things were so difficult. So he was sharing with a friend his experience. So the friend now told him that he would take him to a prophet that will pray for him. That the man, whenever he prayed for people, he do work. So he now took him to the man in Abuja, forgotten the name of the place. So the prophet now told him to write out all the problem, whatever thing that he think that is his problem, he should write them out. That if he go home by 12 midnight, he should use some to recite those prayers. After reciting them, he should burn them and put inside water and drink that all his problem will be wiped away so actually he said he did not do it that his spirit did not uh, agree to it so that is what is going on all over people will wash people's brains say burn them and drink and your problem will be over we discover that you are adding more problem to yourself may god help us in jesus name secondly he said a friend took him to a program he attended that program that it was a miracle Sunday. So they called out women that needed children. If you need their uh, boys, you should come with Apple. He said maybe they announced it before that Sunday he attended that church. I don't know. So th those that need male child, they came with apples. If you need five boys, you come with five apples. You need gear, you come with a uh, banana. As many that you want. So they now called them out in the church service that very day. Those ones who need four boys, they were eating apple. Everybody was busy eating apple. Those ones who need girls, we are eating banana. At the end of the day, nothing happened because the brother that, his friend that took him there, they gave birth to only one baby girl. So he's looking for a boy too. His wife joined him eating the 
apple. At the end of the even tea tree, the fact they have even separated. The man now is in Lagos, the woman is still in uh, Abuja. The boy, they did not born. The girl, they did not born. Then they, they call out another set. Girls, boys and girls that, look, that are looking for marriage. They, they said, if you want husband, spray perfume. Say they started spraying perfume, all kinds of oh. order. Filled the whole place so he now ran away. He said he couldn't be. He have to stay outside and wait for them till the service was uh, over. May God help us in oh, Jesus' away. name. My husband, oh, the person oh, oh, oh. that I invited to, for the program, he didn't go there for his, it was his friend that carried him okay. along. So the girls were busy spreading all kinds of perfume in the name of looking for husband. He left them there and ran away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. From um, where I come from, Anglican Church, what um, we used to do once in a year, every Wednesday, um, once in a year, on a Wednesday, they'll pick a particular, particular Wednesday. That Wednesday, they will gather the whole members. You will line up the bishop or the reverend father. They will rub ash on your head, um, in cross on your head. You will use it and go home. Another one, um, someone. What will happen when you go with the ash on your head? That is just um, signifying something. I don't know what it signifies. We okay. just rub the ash on your head. Okay. And not, another one was someone in my family where he used to worship. He was very sick, so the um, pastor came to pray for him. He brought anointing oil and said that someone is looking for your cups, that they are waiting for your cups in, in the village, mm. that when you go to the village, they will carry your cups and come back home. So, after all the whole prayer that day, the next day, he died. Who? The person that was worshipping in my father, where he was worshipping in the church, his, um, he, his pastor came to my house and said that I was praying for him because he said that because my father was sick, so he was praying for him, saying that they are waiting for your cups in the village, that once you just rub this anointing oil, you'll be healed, you will not die again. Mm. But after that day, he died. And okay. the most shocking part was, after um, one year, we saw the pastor that came to my house acting film in, a, in the television. We saw him acting film. It was a big shock to the family. Mm. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Praise yes. God. Hallelujah. My own was from Kogi State, Zion Deliverance Ministry. So our pastor asked us to come with chain. That that very day we are going to chain all the witches and wizards. Hmm. We bought chain and padlock. So when we brought it, he prayed inside and asked us to lock the chain with padlock. Then we are to go and throw the key where you can't see it again. So we, we locked it and we took it and went and keep it in our houses. So any time you want to pray, you will go and carry it. You will start praying. All the witches and wizards, I lock you up. You must die. You must. We keep doing that. It was when I came to know Horimo that I went and carried the chain and, and destroyed it and threw it away. So many things, even anointing oil. There was a time I was pregnant for my last baby. So... When I was to give birth, and I went to my pastor's wife, she took anointing oil. She was rubbing it on my stomach. She was praying for me, rubbing it. In short, in that labor, I, it was God, if not. I was in labor, and I was sick. Somebody that was prayed for to give birth successfully. I was sick. I was just shivering. It was the grace of God. If not, I would have passed through there and go. I thank God for the mercy of God. And... In my church, there are different practices. Like when you come, you come for deliverance because it is a deliverance church. They use anointing oil. They use handkerchief, which is called rod of dominion. They use different things, sand, all those things. They will ask you to go and spray it in your house that all the powers that are fighting you, they will all die. So many things like that that he used to use. Even when we came to know Horimo, we bought some books. We went to give him. See, today, he did, not, he did not give us the book. When my husband went to him 
and said to sir, we want to use the material for evangelism. He now told him that he don't even know where he kept them. So till today, he still continue in that his practices till today. When you, want, when you come for deliverance, he will ask you to book. You will, you will, they will give you form. You will pay money. And the money is not a small money. You will, you will pay the money. There was a woman that came. This woman came for deliverance. So she was sick. But when she came, it, they asked her to come and buy form. And the woman was with only 1,000, somebody that was serious sick. They said she should pay money, big money. She said, uh-uh, this is a church, and they're asking me to pay money. So she now left there. She went to the clinic. And coming to the clinic, God helped her. They didn't even collect money from her. They now treated her. She now started telling them that, look at what they did to her. So these people, what they are doing is only God that will help us. They are children of the devil. Have you been seeing people die? Ask her. I'm asking her. The, when you were binding, they said the witches and witches to die. Did anyone die? No, none of them die. Those who were witches themselves, them, them, themselves were they also using padlock and N praying? No, sir. How do you know? <laughs> sir, I don't know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for God's mercy in my life and in my family for bringing us to Horemon. I was born and brought up a Mountain of Fire member. We used anointing oil, holy water, brooms, and all sorts of things. There was one prominent one our deliverance pastor used to do. After fasting for some days, like maybe seven days, 21 days, then he would put water in his mouth, wash his mouth, the water will be white, then you open up your own mouth and pour the water inside. You open up the ear and pour the water. You open up your eye and pour the water. You see, that's deliverance. So I thank God for the mercies of God upon me and my family. To him be all the glory in Jesus' name. <laughs> you say mountain of what? Mountain of fire. Wonderful. Amen. Ah. My own is Cherubin and Sarafi. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. What I want to talk about is there is what we call uh, tularon water. And uh, normally that you send for water. Uh, no, tularon water. They set it on fire. I'm, I try to give a meaning to it in English. Yes, sir. Incest. They call it incest. Yes. Okay. They use it when. Okay, tularon water. Yes, tularen incense water. of fire. Yes, sir. Okay. The which is the, that one is common in the Cherubin and Seraphim. And there is another one uh, that is common. There is one stick, let me call it a iron rod or a stick. That once you want to pray, they carry that one and chuck it inside your water. And that water you will keep it, preserve it, and be using it. It has happened to me once like that when I was in secondary school. That when uh, I want to resume back to school, I will go for, the, uh, for prayers, which is a prophetess or prophet to pray for me. Tell me some uh, psalms to read and the matters. And I carry that water and use. And another one again is uh, palm kernel tree. We use it to produce it as a sign of a uh, cross. Palm tree. Palm tree, yes. yes. They use it as a sign of cross. Form it as a sign of cross and put it inside water. And you'll be using that water and be drinking. Another one is Kandu. Kandu, I drank the water of Kandu. Why, why? It's God that delivered me. You doubt the whole Kandu can be born inside the water. And you'll be using that water and be drinking and keep it jealously. So it's ah. only God that will deliver us. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I really want to thank God for salvation. Because so many years ago, we almost, my, like, my younger brother almost killed the last born in the family. You should be careful of these people that they invent their churches on the mountain. You, you see, Orioke, Bamila, Orioke, all these people. 
So my mother, she used to go to, she's a prayer woman, she used to go to all this mountain to go and pray. So they minister to her that the last one in the family is the one disturbing the family. So they the give last revelations. Born, the last one will do what? They said the, the last one in the family yes. that he has demons is a witch. Of, it's, it's a, a wizard, wizard that uh -huh. they should bring him to the mountain, that they should, they should pray. That the, he's the one disturbing the organization in the family. Okay. So when they brought him, they will even tell you that this is where you place your cup. And you will be saying, ah, go on, revelation, see through revelation. They will tell you the color of your bed sheet that you're using. And you think that it's God that's revealing those things to them. You don't know that they are working with demons. Mm. They will send those demons into your house. They yes. will not, the demons will be telling them that this is, this is where you, your bed is. This is where your cup is. Yes. This is the work your husband is doing. This is what will happen to you next tomorrow. And you think that it's God that is ministering to them. So when they brought my brother, I was not there. But the, the, the one that was older than, my, than the last one went with them. So they started praying and praying and praying. And my brother started displaying witchcraft like he was confessing, saying some things. He said he has padlock all over the houses. That, there is, that is where he has locked the glory of all the family. So when my brother and my mommy came home, my brother was like, this was what happened. So everybody started creating hatred for him. Mm. Any little thing he does, we will start beating him. Everybody started hating him in mm. the family. The next one again, they said the one that followed him, he also has witchcraft <laughs> that they should bring him again. So everybody in the family, we started hating each other. <laughs> we started, anything you do, even if he dreams and he says, ah, this is what God told him. You said, shut up. We don't want to listen to you. So we started hating each other. It got to a time that we, we, my brothers, they would hold knife against themselves. But we just want to thank God. It was my daddy that brought, because he didn't know that all of those things were happening in the family. He now had to gather everybody. He started telling us that. Nobody has witchcraft in this family. If he's the head of the house and he's a born again Christian, that demons cannot operate in this vicinity. And that was how we got our deliverance and we prayed and everything went down. And we loved ourselves again and we had peace in our family. So we should be careful of the revelation we hear. Not all revelation comes from God. It might sound true. It might sound like what is happening to you, but not all revelation. We should pray for a spirit of discernment to be able to know when God is really speaking and when the enemy is speaking. Thank you. Wonderful. Who is giving the revelation? A dog is giving revelation. Cat is giving revelation. Bamboo is giving revelation. <laughs> and you think that God is inside the revelation? Ah, thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. This one happened to my younger sister. She was having some challenges. One of her friends told her to come with her to go to her church that her pastor will help, will be able to help her. And when they went there, the day they normally see the man on, the, on an ordinary day, it is a day in a week that they will see him before Sunday. So the, my sister and her friend went there that day, I think on Thursday. So after my sister have explain, explain, explain everything to the man of God, so he asked my sister to come to their service on Sunday. Then on Sunday they went. Lo and behold, this man came up to see to prophesy. So he started he, he started saying everything that my sister had explained to her, to him. He said that somebody is here. Your name is Choma. You come from so 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 place. This and that. He started say, saying everything that my sister told her that is her challenge. To make people to believe that he prophets, that is a true prophet. My sister said that she was just there like a grand, she opened for her to enter. She was just waiting for the man to finish what he was. He even called her out. He started prophesizing. So these are one of the ways they used to deceive people. Another one, there's this man I we were together many years back. This man fell sick. They took him to many places for healing. Healing was not coming. So one woman told them to bring the woman to her church. They took, sorry, the man to her church. When they took the man to the woman's church, they asked them to go and buy coffee. 
so that they will change the man, that they, so that the man will not die. They buy coffee, they put the man inside the coffee, they learn the coffee, they, they learn the coffee the way they normally lay uh, cups if they want to bury. So after, I don't know whether it's, a, I think, 24 hours or how many days, they brought the man out. And uh, lo and behold, the man died. Oh. The man still died. Then there's this another man, in a, I think in area one, they called the church, I think, Divine Hand. So he used to give people, if you go there, you have problem, you give people a, a tag to, to, put, to wear, to put on your neck, we are moving with it up and down. He also used to give them Holy Communion to place. If you are having stomach pain, you place it on your stomach. If it is headache, you place it, or you are having any, any challenge in the body, you place the Holy Communion on, the, on your body. So I was like, what is all this? So many people were being deceived today. Even me, I, have, I happened to go to one man of God one day, many years back. After seeing the man of God, told me he brought a paper. He brought a suggest of salt. He said, I said, what are you, what are you trying to do? He said, want to give me the salt to go and use it and bait. I said, no. I didn't see this one in my Bible anywhere. He opened a place in the Bible he read. He said that King David used salt and to do this and do that. Then I put the quotation in my head. I went on my own. I searched for the place. I couldn't find it. I couldn't see that thing in that very place he quoted. So I did not collect it. I said, no, no, I don't need this salt. Please, I don't need it. If he said, why? I said, I didn't say anything like this in my Bible. If you can pray for me, I believe in prayer. Pray for me, let me go. So he prayed for me, but that prayer did not come from his heart. Within me, I know that he did, did not. Did he have the power to pray? You see that somebody is uh, using salt, <laughs> and you're asking him to pray for you. By what spirit? So till today, this man of God, anyway, I see me, even if I greet him, he doesn't greet me. Sometimes we keep quiet, sometimes we just answer like that. He doesn't want to even see me. But you're pursuing so, him with greeting. So, because you're not convinced to know that he that does not bring this doctrine is under, hit, is under curse. Let him be a cursed person to you. He that does not bring this doctrine. That's the word of God. So may God help us because many things are happening outside there. Thank may you. God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I really thank God to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Where I'm coming from, Taraba State, I had one of my neighbors that invited me for one program to attend because I always invite him to come for our program also. So when I went for the program, they invited a guest speaker from Ghana. So he preached after the preaching. He could not even call people to come for altar call. Then he said, anointing. Everybody should come out. He want to anoint everybody. The whole congregation came out and lined up at the altar. He anointed them. I was the only person left. I didn't go. My spirit here, I will not go because uh, I, I'm really safe. That's what I believe in. That when Osha came and tapped me and said, see the whole congregation have gone. You also go and get the anointed. I said, no, I'm already anointed. I told the Osha like that. After I finished anointing them, he, they went and sat back. He now said, everybody that have anointed, they should bring a money that the figure start with five. Five naira, 50 naira, 500, 500,000. So, and they have given offering already. So, some of the people were not even having money to give. The same time, my friend came and said, I should borrow him any money that is with Figo 5. I said, I can't give you money because if you are to ask me money for offering, I will give you, but to go and give for anointing me, I will not do that. So, he now, they even he went outside, he went and borrowed the money outside and came and gave. Everybody that anointed gave that money. So, he even gave them with some white handkerchief and some anointing water that if you are even farming or doing or writing exams, you will rub your pen or maybe your seat. You will just really clean inside and, and you will plant and you will get a lot of bumper harvest. I asked that my friend when we close, I said, you, you farm last year, you have been long in this church. How many bags of um, harvest you have gotten this year? He said, only got two. I said, you are believing on that thing. Those things are false. You don't believe those things. So you, you just believe on God and serve God and God will help you. And also, my, my, I was privileged to marry also my wife. They invited my wife to one church. We, we, she went there. Then she called me because I traveled by then. Because God delayed us in, delayed to give us a child. It was the second year. 
they told my wife that he should go and buy apple and come along with me so that we'll pray and we'll eat that apple and we'll get the child. My wife told me, we went there. Then I told my wife that you bought this apple. Is this scriptural? Let's go based on scripture. This thing is not in scripture. Me, I will not partake in this. We went there, the man of God. I told the man of God that truly, what you are saying is not the scripture and we can't follow it. I told my wife when we came back, I said, we'll only be believing, trusting God. If God can help other people, pray it and it will work. I and you, we are saved. Let's pray to God and God will give us sight. We were praying anytime in the night from 12. We join her with my wife. We prayed very well. When we are praying in the night, we see stone will be as if they are throwing stone on top of roofs. They will throw stone in the night like that. We we'll keep praying and God help us and we, she conceived that month and she delivered a baby boy. I thank God for that. And also I want to encourage you with all this sound teaching we are listening. The other time when I had this uh, mommy's uh, revelation that she, the cassette that she produced, I, I bought the cassette, I went to village, I was also playing, going to churches, I preached to other people there. Then there was one woman that I, we met that we were doing evangelism. And I tell the woman, please, putting up this attachment is not something good. It's not biblical. The woman said, I should forget about that thing. We that we should preach. We are from the parlor. We should preach those things. I should forget. Are we not using thread to plant head? I said, it's not like that. It's not biblical. Then the same that woman, she plant this kind of style that used to be very tiny. Then in the, we plant finish it in the night. She slept. When she slept, those... Um, I came from darkness appeared, three of them, and said they need back the attachment. It should not cut even one. It should bring them all full how they brought it. And it was very tiny here. She went and called the neighbor. She come and lose it. Lose, and they only gave her 10 minutes. When you reached 10 minutes, were, they were not able to lose their head. That's how the woman died like that. So I pray that with all this teaching we are listening, please let's always make sure that we make it into practice and practice very well so that it should not be at the end of the day where we are listening all these things and the rapture take place and we miss heaven, we will not be God. Pray Lord help us in Jesus' name. Thank you. Okay, let's stop here now. You, we have exhausted it. In fact, I didn't know God would give us a good day like this because I've been thinking how you will know these things and you have known them. Let's rise up upon our feet. Give thanks to God for teaching the church this. And others also who shall hear this shall say, Thank you, Lord, for delivering us from darkness.